Hello, and welcome to this lesson on WebSockets in the Interactive Brokers Client Portal API. In this lesson, we will be discussing how to build a WebSocket and how to perform typical tasks like requesting market data or requesting live trade information using the Client Portal API. To begin, let's start by looking at our documentation page referring to our WebSocket values. Just like our standard endpoints section, there's a lot more to be done with WebSockets than what we will be able to show in this video. But our foundation will allow you to move on with any of these other details you might be interested in. The documentation will showcase how to retrieve streaming data, trades information, as well as notification details for alerts. I would also like to highlight the WebSocket playground at the bottom. While we will be building the WebSocket ourselves in Python, as long as your client portal gateway is up and running, you can use this as a great method to test out new requests. After hitting the connect button, you can paste in any of the WebSocket requests above and send them to the WebSocket to test the functionality. However, I will disconnect from that and we can start reviewing how this can be done using Python. Before we move into the file, you will likely need to pip install the WebSocket-Client module. This will be rather unique from our prior programs, so I will be building a fresh file. After installing our WebSocket Client module, we will need to import WebSocket, Time, and the SSL modules into our new Python file. Utilizing WebSockets will require building out a WebSocket object. I will define the method on message and set the arguments to ws and message. All we will do now in this method is print the message values. After that, I will define the method on error. Just like before, I will pass ws and error as variables. Next, I can define the method on close and only pass the argument ws. This will only be printing the phrase closed to make sure I showcase that our WebSocket had closed. Moving on to a more exciting method, I can define on open and pass the WS argument inside the method. Inside the method, I will define a few details. I will start by simply printing open connection to acknowledge that the connection was established. Now I will add a time.sleep with a value of three to make our program pause for a few seconds to make sure that everything is up and running. Now, I want to make a list called conIDs and set it equal to the strings 265598 and 8314. This will be a request for market data for both Apple and IBM. Now, I want to iterate through my conIDs with a for loop for con ID in con IDs. In a new indent in line, I can write the method ws.send. This will reference our WebSocket object that was passed into our onOpen method and can send a request. Within the send method, I will pass the following. In single quotes, smd and then a plus, followed by another single quote. Then another plus sign, letter I, and then another plus. And then in an array, I'll do double quotes for the word fields, and then a colon, and then in a list, I will put in the double quoted values 31, 84, and 86. And then after closing the bracket and then closing the array, I will add a single quote. I would note that the formatting of the single and double quotes is mandatory in this scenario. In our case, we must send the field values with their quoted values. And it's worth bearing in mind that all fields that are used on the iServer forward slash market data forward slash snapshot endpoint can be used here as well. If you are interested in finding out more about this topic, please reference our prior lesson on requesting market data in the Client Portal API. Inside our name main idiom, I will define the variable ws. 
I will set this equal to the WebSocket dot WebSocket app, and then I set a parentheses class. We will need to pass everything we have built up so far, as well as WebSocket URL. Starting with our URL, I will create a string for WSS colon forward slash slash localhost colon 5000 forward slash v1 forward slash api forward slash ws. I'll assign the argument on open to our on open method. Note that we are not actually passing the parentheses this time, only the function name. I will do the same with on message equal to on message. And again with on error equal to on error. And finally, on close set equal to on underscore close. Finally, I will call our WebSocket to run the ws.run underscore forever method. I will set the SSL opt argument equal to cert underscore rex set equal to the field SSL dot cert underscore none in all caps. Much like verify equals false in our other lessons, this will disable our SSL verification. We can now run our code. I will see my open connection message followed by a few authentication details and my account information. Eventually, I will start seeing a few responses beginning with server underscore ID, which will identify my requests from one another. The conID EX and conID fields will show my contract identifier. The underscore updated field will return the epoch time of a given return. Moving along, we can see all of my field values being returned here for the given con ID. Now we are able to see ongoing stream of market data for our two contracts as new data is available. Now, Let's move on to a new example using the live order updates request instead. This will be built functionally the same as our market data stream. Because of that, I will simply copy over the files for the moment and work with that foundation. I will simply modify my on open method, and instead of sending out my SMD request, I will instead be sending out SOR plus and then a set of brackets. This will key off of my currently active account, so no additional account information is needed. After running this code, I will see all of my other orders placed today. This will show the same authentication status as before, and we will see our heartbeat messages return to us to let us know the WebSocket is still open and connected. Let's see how it functions in real time. I will open my place order request from our prior lesson to submit an order to Apple. Running my place order file, I will see my order ID returned, along with my current order status. If I jump back to my WebSockets console, I can see that our new order was activated, and I can see the same order ID mirrored over in my WebSockets console. I can even see the execution return and a description on how the order filled. Thank you for watching this lesson on WebSockets in the Client Portal API. If you found this lesson helpful, please check out our other lessons in the Client Portal API tutorial series.